Good afternoon, everyone. Millions of fish die in Lake Toba. It's definitely a release of gas from some type of volcanic activity. University of Alabama Huntsville Global Temperature Update August 2018. The temperature dropped on our planet from July of 2018. So all those stories you heard about the warmest summer ever, not true. And let's stay on the cold side, cosmic cold front. And speaking of that, Mini Ice Age Conversations, Episode 100, astrophysicist Piers Corbin sat down with me to explain the uptick in earthquakes, volcanic activity, and crop losses. You can find that Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Libsyn, and anywhere else, podcasts are hosted on the net. The link for that episode is below in the description box, as well as the links to tonight's stories and images. Since winter is quickly approaching, even with the UK set to go below zero Celsius, which is below freezing temperatures over this week, and we're still not even into autumn yet, was officially still summertime. And here comes the cosmic cold front. Scientists surprised by this relentless event. Now to put it in perspective though, the difference between 80 million degrees and 30 million degrees, that's what they're talking about here. Chandra X-ray Observatory found this cold front in the Perseus Galaxy Cluster, and they're surprised how it stays together extremely sharp over eons rather than becoming diffuse. Oh yeah, that would be an electrical phenomenon, not gravity. On to Lake Toba. This is the largest volcanic caldera on the planet. Yellowstone pales in comparison to Toba. 70,000 years ago when this erupted, it created a year without a summer for about 20 straight years. This is the second year in a row in the millions of fish have died in the lake. This is a different location than last year. It was definitely a gas release from the supervolcano that permeated the water and suddenly millions of fish were found floating dead in these cages. And it goes right along with the water becoming suddenly cloudy. And we're starting to see a lot of upticks wherever you look globally, these calderas, volcanoes, Fault zones are all starting to awake as we get deeper into the grand solar minimum. But here's some look at the different types of fish species that were affected by this kill-off. Freshwater varieties here. But when you look at the loss of this, it's millions and millions of pounds of fish. Now take a look at the official hypothesis. They don't want to touch volcanic activity with a 10-foot pole. It was a rapid change in the temperature of the oxygen-poor water at the bottom of the lake, causing a sudden upwelling of water that made the lower level the surface. Well, they actually kind of alluded to a gas escape there. We're talking about churning of the water from lower depths. But if you put two and two together with the increase of the grand solar minimum, what Piers Corbin and myself talked about, the, the uptick in earthquakes, volcanic activity, as well as Jet streams shifting that are now affecting our crops. Australia is going into a mega drought along with South Africa. And you're going to see more and more of these locations around the planet start to have unusual weather that will affect the yields. And at the end of the year, we both agree, food prices up and up and up. Now, something that's not up and up and up are the global temperatures, which are down again. University of Alabama Huntsville Global Temperature Update, August 2018. 0.19 degree above baseline, not even two tenths of a degree Celsius. That's down from the July temperature of 0.32. Now the news media has been feeding us forest fires, epic heat, all time record heat. It's the hottest world ever. But wait, how did the temperature drop from July? Because typically in the Northern hemisphere, August is even a warmer month than July. Yet this year it declined in temperature. Now the forecast is that we're going to continue to decline in temperature from this point forward and we're absolutely going to crash something back through the 1980s that you see on the far left of the chart and we are just going to continue down from there as we get in over these next five to seven years. Our crops are going to have a very difficult time with this. Our seasons are going to be in shambles. There will no longer be reliable planting or harvesting times. You're going to get these extremes. You know, the extreme heat, that's the equatorial vortex. Media loves to run with that one. It's part of the grand solar minimum changes as well. But you notice all these August snows we've had across the northern hemisphere. I mean, these winters are going to become longer and the summers are going to become shorter, but they're going to be excruciatingly hot. 
this is what we're seeing already. So let's take a look in a tabular form here because I feel this breaks it down far better than what you just saw in the graph there. This breaks it down by the year, the month, the total global. We have the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, Tropics, US 48 lower, the Arctic, and then Australia sitting there as a continent by itself. Now I took 2017, month eight, that's August, compared to 2018, eight month August. So I just compared this year to last. So taking a look at the global temperatures down, it was 0.41, down to under two tenths. Now remember the IPCC told us we'd be running up at two degrees, three degrees, four degrees Celsius by 2050, and we're not even at two tenths of a degree yet and declining. Northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, both down from last year. How is that possible if it's going to be the warmest year ever? The whole takeaway for me is the Arctic temperatures. I put the blue box around that just to highlight it for you so you can easily find it on the right side of the chart there. Almost half a degree Celsius over baseline at 0.49 last year in August. This year they've been talking about heating the Arctic, but I just don't see it at all because it's 0.09, not even one-tenth of a degree over those 30-year averages that the IPCC loves to feed you about our temperatures are rising above the average. Well, it's not even one-tenth of a degree above the average in the Arctic for this August. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And speaking of growing food, sprouts, microgreens, or any kind of gardening, you're going to have to get your fingers dirty and start practicing because you're going to have to do this for real as the rest of the crop losses sweep across the planet from this year forward. The Adapt2030 TrueLeafMarket.com link is also in the description box below, along with Pierce Corbin and myself's interview, Mini Ice Age Conversations, episode number 100. That is a milestone in the podcast world. Thank you so much for your support.